Shalom, shalom, chavrin. Exciting day to get to come and speak with you. We've had so many videos here recently that I've put out that have uh, stirred a lot of debate. Uh, I did stop the comments on one video mainly because I had over a thousand at this point and it's just hard for me to go through every single comment. Uh, so I do apologize for stopping that there, but uh, it gets me kind of distracted. And, I, and, and of course, there's other videos you could comment on as well if you want to take a little time and if you have even comments on that one you could put, place it on one of the other videos I, I, I don't mind reading them I try to read all of the comments as best I can um, but I want to just take a few minutes of your time and share with you that the book Yamsuf uh, uh, did Moses prophesy of, uh, of, an, of, of an event in the Holocaust is now released. Uh, I didn't realize until just a few moments ago that it's even available on Amazon.com. Uh, I'd love to encourage you to uh, go and order this book. Those of you that have been so kind to help us get this book in print, that have been uh, supportive of the ministry here, who have given, uh, whether it be through uh, by mail to us, uh, which our address did change. We'll update that on the video here as well. It's now 12537 Gemstone Court, Fort Myers, Florida, 33913. Uh, we, do, we moved our office to our home versus having the expense of an outside office. And um, uh, also I'd like to mention that we, will, we want to send uh, copies of the book uh, for, to, to those of you that have sent, uh, that have been kind enough to give, as well as on our website, israelreturns.com. We have a donation spot there. And um, I, I don't like to ask very often for anything like that because of the fact I know that there's enough burden on in people's lives. Uh, but I really feel strong and passionate about this book, and uh, I feel like it'll be a help to my own people. Uh, besides looking into the Sea of Reeds, why Moses calls the Red Sea a Sea of Reeds and resolving a 3,500-year-old biblical mystery, I also go into the redemption of Israel into a very into a depth that has probably never been gone into before. There are many insights on the redemption process that have never been revealed uh, by any other biblical scholar. And, uh, and it's really causing Jewish people to scratch their heads. And I, I would like to just share with you uh, you can kind of view on the screen now the cover of the book, and, I, and you may even be able to see the back cover as well. But uh, when my publisher, uh, Jim Windorf of Faithful Life Publishers, which is also where you can order the book too, um, that website, I'll put it on the screen for you here. Uh, I think it's, uh, if you go to uh, www.faithfullifepublishers.com, it'll get you there, but I believe also his website is also known as, uh, which, which takes you right to the store. It would be www.store. Um, I'll, I'll put it up on the screen there. I, I don't have it right before me there. But anyway, uh, you can order the book directly from uh, Faithful Life Publishers. They have other Christian books as well that are available. But Jim did a remarkable job in putting the cover together. And I've sent him so many emails of different people that have uh, that have sent me information about the story as, uh, as it was revealed to them. And he put some of their quotes on the back of the book, and I'd like to share them with you because it'll be names of people that you will, you will have known. Uh, <clears throat> the first one on there is from Dr. James Dobson, and he says here, With regards to the books you've written, Israel, Are They Still God's People? and Yom Suf, it was encouraging to note that you make a case for the reliability of the scriptural account concerning the people of Israel crossing the Red Sea. While we are confident in the truthfulness of God's word, it is always heartening to hear of archaeological finds that provide supporting evidence for what the Bible says. I thank, thank Dr. Dobson for, for his comment. He also commented to me on Facebook before about this story, uh, just very supportive. Uh, Dr. Chuck Missler of the Koina Institute also, uh, we actually took the comment from the interview that I did with him uh, back at the uh, Koina Institute in uh, Coeur, Coeur d'Alene, Utah. And Dr. Chuck says, we are discovering that even the declaration of the letters carries meaning. So that's why your instinct here was triggered by the contemporary movie Defiance confirms the direction you felt instinctively you put a perspective here on the sea of reeds that deserves some serious scholastic attention uh, I'm really grateful to dr uh, missler and uh, his uh, views on this story as well 
Uh, Rabbi Daniel Lappin is another one uh, who actually emailed us and they put the quote from him on the back of the book, said, Stephen Danoon is definitely on to something, it seems. Uh, he was very interested in this story. Uh, Dr. Ken Hansen, who happens to be a Hebraic scholar uh, up at the University of New Orlando there, uh, he, is a, um, he deals more with the Kabbalah uh, from the insights in the Hebrew language, but he is uh, uh, fluent in Hebrew, been on the History Channel before in, in a series there. Uh, he made the comment as well, you are right about the meaning of Yam Suf, which by the way means Sea of Reeds. Um, I do indeed see cyclical fulfillments of many, if not most, biblical prophecies and the modern 20th century implications of the passage you quote, Jeremiah 23, should not be overlooked. And then finally, we uh, have a, 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 a nice insight from author Rex Burns, who any of you that read uh, Detective Mysteries, uh, Rex was also had one of his books turned into a movie called The Angel or The Messenger of Death with Charles Bronson back in the 80s. And he says here, Yom Suf is moving and a sincere exploration of biblical prophecy on levels of meaning that are both deeply personal as well as historical. Danun has established striking parallels between the latest archaeological evidence of the exodus across the Sea of Reeds and the Bielski defiance of Nazi persecution in the 20th century. The work also demonstrates convincing faith in the immediate relevance of biblical encoding to present a uh, to present and future events the author's own story of his pursuit of those means gives added warmth and conviction to the narrative uh, i'd like to thank also uh, uh rex burns for his for his comments as well um the book is very is is is, is in depth it deals with the red sea crossing the ar archaeological discoveries that were made by the different uh people that have been involved in um, the, the chariot wheels of Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia, who uh, uh, Ron Wyatt brought that first to the world's attention, followed up by uh, the Caldwells, Viv Capontian, Leonard Moeller, uh, and Bob Cornuke, um, um, among a few. I don't know there's been others that have also done uh, some research since that time. Um, but I go into the, the terminology for the Red Sea itself. Why did Moses call it Yom Suf? And I believe that he actually prophesied of an event in the Holocaust, which was fulfilled in the, 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 uh, the Bielski story, where Tuvia Bielski, who rescued the Jews at that time. Um, but that's only part of the book. I'm really, when I do the book here, I'm actually focusing on showing the people how that God still deals with the Israeli people. And, uh, and, and in doing so, yeah, the climax of the book and probably the majority of the book that ends up in the, in the last uh, chapter of the book is where I really take the depths of the redemption of Israel. The insights that I bring out in there are things that have never been introduced by scholars. Some things are just common, things that we would know, the story of Joseph. But I bring in things about the story of Joseph that are not the typical norm that we would think of when we think of the story of Joseph. Um, and uh, like, for example, you know, uh, when Joseph was uh, re uh, rejected of his brothers, you know, we see that Jesus was rejected at the end. And of course, Joseph, when his brothers find their grain in the bag, they find it at the hotel itself on the way back to, to their father. Uh, so there's a lot of things that I like to bring out in there and, and I bring out in here. And in the process, another thing that, that, that uh, many of our sisters have found fascinating as well in, in writing the book Yom Suf is that indirectly it brings support to uh, an equality, uh, if you might say it this way here, an equ a biblical equality at that. Because there's so many people that fail to recognize that God created Adam, Adam and Eve in, on, on an equal basis. And that the fall itself in Genesis, God never instituted for her husband to rule over her. He's only showing you prophetically the results of sin. And we get into that in the book, uh, mostly because we're looking for the redemption of Israel here. But it brings out the fall and what actually takes place. Uh, and brings it all the way up to the modern times, why God split the rock. The very rock that is found in the wilderness journey for Israel is split for a reason. It's a reflection of what happened with Adam and Eve, how God created them, and how that Christ would redeem his people, uh, that Moshiach ben David would, 
would, he is that rock. And so therefore, as Adam was put to a deep sleep and God taken Eve from his side, so God had to put Christ to a deep sleep in order to be able to take the spirit out of his side, the spirit of the living God, and to be able to pour it back upon all, of, all, all the humanity, all those that had waited upon it, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that looked for that promise uh, even to the day that we're living in now, the Spirit of God or the Holy Spirit, as we often hear about it through the Christian faith, uh, has poured out. So it's something that the Jewish people, if you've ever wanted to be a witness to the Jewish people, you can take that last chapter and there's so much you can learn from that that would help you to bring something to their attention that's not the norm that, you know, because Jews know what Christians bring and, and we're ready for you when you're coming. So we know how to, not to put it bluntly, but we can slam Christians easily on their own Bible. But the thing is, is I, I try to bring these things out and things that they've never thought about before. And I've actually won uh, my own people to Christ in doing so. So I think it's something that you may be interested in. I'd like to also, though, real quick, let me mention to you as well, uh, and this is, like I said, I found out this morning that the book's already available on Amazon.com, which was interesting to see. Um, but uh, my wife noticed the other night, she said, you have a five-star rating. And she says, kind of uncommon for writers to have a five-star rating on, on the reviews people have done. And this morning, just quickly, I'm looking through, even Google Books has it. I'm a five-star rating in there on the first book I wrote called Israel, Are They Still God's People? And I thank those that, that were, took the time to make a comment on there. And I really would ask you as well, if you read the book, uh, either one of the books, Israel, Are They Still God's People or Yom Suf, um, please take the time to write your opinions. I, I appreciate them greatly. Critical or not, I appreciate your opinions. Even on the videos, many of you give me your opinions and, and there's many sometimes that are critical and, uh, you know, but it makes me dig deeper as well. And if I make a mistake, I certainly want to make that right. And I know, and I will say as well, I've heard a lot of people believe that Obama is the Antichrist. Um, there's a lot of people say, well, you know, see, we believe that the Pope is the false prophet. And, and I, I do want to just tell you one thing there, you know, that may very well be true. And I am, as I can find that time to look into those things, I'm trying to search deeper myself to see, is it separate people? Or as my way of thinking is that it's going to be one man kind of playing all three roles. Now, I could be totally wrong on that. You know, I, my focus is more to my own people and what God is doing for them and for their eyes to come open to recognize who Moshiach ben David is. So you have to understand that's my, my focus. Anyway, Israel, are they still God's people? This is a great book also for the Jewish people because I take a defense for our people that we're not finished, we're not wiped off, we're not... Um, I, I really deal with the, the, a lot of Christians, and unfortunately, even those that support Israel believe that if the Jews don't accept Jesus as their Savior, they're all lost and going to hell. And um, I kind of make an argument in defense of Israel on that point there, because I don't believe Jesus taught that. Although I do believe that they have to recognize Jesus to be Messiah, but all the Jews up until that time that have not recognized him as Messiah, I believe the word clearly shows how that Israel is protected through the blood of Jesus Christ. And I go into that in this book. But let me just share with you the comments, and we'll kind of close this video at that there uh, on here. And it says right here, this is from Amazon.com. We have uh, one man, his name is Troy. He says, the thoughts expressed in this book by Stephen Denner are very interesting. I must confess, some of his insights are new to me as a Christian for more than 30 years. I can tell you I learned something new. When Danun takes the Lord's Prayer and proves that Jesus was speaking of Israel to be reestablished as a nation, it took me off guard for a moment. But when he proved it from Ezekiel, I was amazed to say the least. You will not regret getting this book. Also, I should add his knowledge proving the redemption of Israel is sure to silence some of the critics and perhaps change some viewpoints on the subject as well. Uh, just really thought that was a nice comment from Troy, doesn't give a last name. I don't th think any of them really do. The next one is by uh, Bob C. Uh, C, I guess for his last name. He says, this is definitely an eye opener. It's good to hear someone knowledgeable straight from the cuff pouring out the facts and then giving you your, their educated thoughts on the uncertainties. Great content. Uh, then the third one here is by Martin H. He says, if you are looking for an exciting read, you found it in Danun's Israel, Are They Still God's People book. <clears throat> he has come up with some very interesting thoughts, thought-provoking discoveries on many of today's hot topics surrounding Israel and theology. 
My favorite chapter is about the 144,000. He thinks outside of the traditional box, and as a result, some of his revelations are so amazing, amazingly obvious, you wonder how no one had thought of them before. Excellent read. God bless you all for, for taking the time to write that. There's other ones out there as well that people have written. And uh, it was a blessing to my own heart to get to see these positive comments that were made. And, uh, and I, I just can't thank you enough for, for your support in that. Uh, and also, I've just, I'll mention to you as well, if you're, if you're interested in wanting to give to the ministry, our website, israelreturns.com, uh, you can go there and you can give. We have a little donation button there. Uh, my next, I have two goals that I want to kind of uh, reach in, in, in this. And one of them is, is translating the book Yom Suf or actually taking maybe the last chapter of the book Yom Suf and then kind of going a little bit more in depth in redemption and translating that into the Hebrew language for my own people for them to really understand who Moshiach is. So it ended up being a little bit shorter of a book. That's one goal. That is a costly endeavor because I, I, although I speak Hebrew, I can edit it, but I would need really a good... Um, I've worked with Danny Ben-Gigi. Some of you may have seen him on television before. Danny and I have worked together before in translating. And uh, I would like to have someone like Danny. Or if you happen to know someone personally who speaks Hebrew fluently and is, is good with gr grammatics of Hebrew, have them contact me, uh, especially if they'd be willing to even donate their time. But more than likely, we'll end up having to pay to have the service done. Not to mention the printing of that particular book. Uh, or if we just do the, the very book Yom Suf from cover to cover, that would be a great idea as well. Um, we'd let, we we want to do that. And the other thing is, is I want to return home. I do want to go back to the, to the homeland. Uh, I can say that uh, as far as something like permanent, but at least to visit my people, to take some of these insights uh, and speak to some of the rabbis that I know there. Anyway, God bless you. Thank you for your, your support and encouragement, and please share these videos with everyone you know. Uh, we certainly greatly appreciate that. We, 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 we're trying to reach all the Jewish people we can. So again, I also ask you, befriend Jews. Find Jews on your Facebook, you know, befriend them, and share this message with them. Share the messages that are on the videos and stuff with them, because believe me, it's shaking the Jewish people. And we may just be the little carryover between the time that God uh, sends the two witnesses to Israel, but we, I feel passionate in my heart. There's something that the Lord has dealt with me on my entire life about my own people ever since the day he spoke to me audibly and told me to read Isaiah 61. Uh, I never have fully understood why. All I know is that besides it speaking of Jesus and his coming, it also speaks of the redemption of Israel. God bless you.